Welcome to the Edge Wrong Review number six, where we take a deep dive into one of our customers' trading journals. Thank you for submitting your journal and let's see what we can make out of this data. At first glance, we can see that this trader is overall in a drawdown. Currently, we are standing at minus 15%. There are some periods where the trader realized significant losses here, for example, very early on a 50% drawdown. The trader then turned his trading completely around and realized at the peak a 60% return. But then afterwards the performance fell and we are currently here in this sideways period where the trader went from roughly trading break even to currently a return of minus 15%. When submitting the journal, the trader told us that he has a custom statistic here which says trade validity. I asked him what this means and he said invalid trades are mostly trades that should have been avoided and trades that don't fit my current trading rules. Over the years I have looked at what criteria need to be met to reduce losses and these trades don't meet those criteria. So let's take a look at only the valid trades. And if we would only look at the valid trades, the trader would have realized a total gain of 271%. I don't know too much about why and what criteria he used. However, there's always the potential problem and I give the trader the benefit of a doubt that he didn't do it, but there's always this potential issue that he is using a lot of hindsight to mark trades that in the past didn't meet the criteria, but he obviously took them. So we need to take them into account as well. Instead of using this invalid and valid comment to distinguish between good and bad trades, what I would recommend and what is much better practice is that for the trades, he could use his entry, exit and trade management comments. And that way he could really nicely rate his entries. Was it a good entry? Was it a bad entry? What was the problem of the entry? And he could do the same for the exit and trade management. Unfortunately, as we can see in this journal, is that he didn't use a single comment for entry, exit and trade management. That is really unfortunate because journaling without qualitative data is not a good sign because traders do not spend enough time evaluating their trading decisions. And very often important insights are then missing. So instead of using this valid and invalid comment, what would be much better practice is to revisit the trade and then rate the entry, the exit and the trade management. That way you can really nicely find out why and what is the actual problem. Where did you screw up? However, now I would not recommend this because when we go to his calendar, we see that when we take a look here at the data is that he has trades from mid 2022. So almost two years ago. And now if we would revisit the trades, he would not be able to really tell what went wrong on the exit, the entry and the trade management, especially when we see that the trader also doesn't have any trade screenshots. So in the chart book, there are no screenshots. So going back to old trades and then re-evaluating the trade decisions is not possible anymore objectively. So unfortunately, he's missing a lot of important insights here. Going forward, I would recommend that the trader now starts using the entry, exit and trade management comments. That will give him completely new insights. But let's still try to see what we can learn about his performance. The first issue that I found is when we go to the chart lab and then we select the trade management and let's only go for the valid trades, right? So we have only the valid trades here. And what we can see is that the actual performance here in blue is below the potential performance here in green. This indicates that the trader is making trade management errors, which typically means cutting winners too short or letting losses run too long. When your potential performance is above the actual performance, it means that potentially you could have made more money by just not interfering with your trades. But this trader seems to be making active trading decisions when the trade is on that is costing him money long term. Let's try to follow this path and let's go to our exit analysis. And let's take only a look at the winning trades to see if we can find patterns here. And what we can see is that by and large he's exiting his trades on the take profit. But there are quite a few instances where the exit marker, here this black diamond marker, is well before the take profit which is this horizontal green line. And the green bar on those trades show that the price would have made it to the target, such as here, 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 those as well, here as well. So overall, the trader seems to have an issue with letting his winners run optimally. This was also indicated by the trade management graph. So this is something that the trader definitely has to focus on because there's a lot more potential performance hidden in his trading. When we go to our risk distribution graph, we can also see that there are a few outliers his average return on losing trades is minus 3.9%. 
this is here in this area and you can see this is where you have the majority of your losses so that seems to be his average position size somewhere in here however there are quite a few trades that exceed this significantly we have four trades that have a loss of over minus 10 percent there's one trade between 10 and 9.75 one trade between 9.5 and minus 9.25 percent and also here there are a few very large outliers here on the losses that's definitely something that needs to be addressed. Without those large losses and trying to limit the losses, this could also help those trader. Now let's go to our trade setups. Let's again only look at the valid trades. And there are not a lot of underperforming setups. Here's one, but there are only two trades. Here's another one, but as well only two trades on this setup. Here's another one, we have nine trades. The setups where you only have one to five trades, I would not worry too much about because the sample size is not large enough. We also just wrote a new article on our blog about the importance of sample size and what you need to consider when you evaluate your trades. So make sure to check that in our blog. However, this setups, I would slowly start getting a little bit concerned about. I would keep a closer eye on those trades to see if there's really an edge or if this setup is underperforming. So when we're in our trade management graph, we only want to look at those types of setups. So we select it and then our trade management graph will update. What we can see is that also for those types of trades, there's an issue with the trade management. Potentially, he could have made more money on those types of setups. So maybe it's not even the setup that's the issue. Maybe there is an edge at the setup, but the trader is also mismanaging those types of trades. Another very helpful insight for the trader. The trader is also using custom statistics to tag the trades based on individual criteria that he's using in his trading. Let's try to see if we can find patterns there. Again, we are only looking at the valid trades. In the bias, there is no outlier here. ATR, we see a little bit of an outlier here for the Asian ATR. The entry session shows a very interesting picture. For the London and the New York session, he is having very good trading results. But for the Asian session, he is losing money. So it could be the case that the instruments that he's using and also the setups that he's using is not very well adjusted for the Asian session. So that's another interesting finding. So the trader can either stop trading the Asian session completely. We also saw that the Asian ATR is underperforming or he has to look into what is going on here and what is the issue. You can again confirm that when we go to our trade management and then we select here our entry sessions for only Asian session. If you have multiple custom statistic filters selected, you want to make sure to tick this box and that will only show you the trades that have both criteria attached. And once again, we see a major difference here in the performance between the potential performance, which is positive but has a negative tendency here and the actual performance, which is already here below zero. So again, there might be an edge in his trading, but he seems to be mismanaging and that seems to be a quite an issue for the trader. So unfortunately, due to the missing entry exit and trade management comments, we cannot really comment on the level of discipline and how well he's able to execute his trading plans and follow his trading rules. But by looking at the risk distribution, his trade management issues, and also taking a look at the setups and the exit analysis, we were still able to identify a few issues for the trader that could help him turn his trading around. And as you can see, a review doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be complicated, but by looking at a few key metrics in the trading journal, we are able to get a very good idea of where the trader has issues and what potential adjustments could help the trader to turn his trading around. Once again, thank you for submitting your journal. And if you are an Edgeron customer and if you would like us to review your journal in one of the next videos, make sure to go to edgewonk.com review or click the link in the video description. We are very happy to help out with the review and take a look at your trading data. Happy journaling.